Hi, my name is Adam Watson from the Chatham office of JMRD Watson, and I'm joined here by Vince Hunter, also from the uh, the Chatham office. And in a year that's been very strange, we thought we'd do something a little different. Uh, um, Vince has a, a passion for for wine, and he spent lots of time challenging sommeliers at uh, at wineries and hosting tasting events. Uh, so we're calling this Holiday at Home with JMRD Watson, and we thought we'd take some of Vince's uh, Vince's knowledge and walk through uh, a tasting. And uh, all the all the wines we bought, I walked in the local LCBO and purchased. Uh, they're all Ontario wines. Uh, and with that, I'll I'll turn it over to Vince. What's the first wine? Well, the first wine we're going to have is uh, in a skillet. It's a Pinot Grigio, right here. Um, this is a, a light white wine made by the Pinot Grigio grape, of course. And Inniskillen is actually one of the very first uh, wineries that started, I believe it was 1973, that got their license along uh, with Peely, uh, Reif, and um, Hillebrand to start bringing the wines into Ontario. They had to fight through the prohibition laws that were established uh, through the mid, like from about, what was it, 23 to 29. Um, they got the license. It was Don Zidaldo and uh, Carl Kaiser, who are the godfathers of ice wine. Anyways, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I've been, fall, like like Adam said, been looking at the wineries in Niagara Falls since about 085. And where I've seen them evolve, it's, it's just remarkable where they've come. Uh, when we first, when they first started, it was kind of like, and, you know, you go into the world uh, events where they're, you know, uh, the pros are looking at it. You know, it was kind of, do we have to do the Canadian wines? Now it's kind of like, put everything aside, let's try these Canadians, especially the whites. You know, our Sauv Blancs, our Rieslings, our Chardonnays have come miles. And I've just noticed probably in the last 10 years that our reds have really, really started to picking up and really getting world class. So what, what we're gonna do is some very, very simple, um, one of the big big things with wine is, you know, a bottle of wine doesn't have to be 100, 200, 300 bucks to be good. There are some really good, very cheap priced wines out there that are very food compatible. Um, this one here, so Adam and I, we're gonna try a little bit and So when you start with wine, the first thing to do, we're gonna do a bunch of what I call the S's. So the first thing you do is you sniff it. Get a feel. The second thing, you're gonna swirl it. Set it on the table and swirl, swirl, swirl. And then you're gonna sniff it again and see how much the air when it gets around affects the, the, the aroma. Like it really intensifies. Did you notice that? Like yeah. it really picks it up. It got it, brought out some more fruit notes. Oh yeah. Um, and in here I get, oh, well, you get to definitely get the citrus. I'm getting like a, a watermelon or a melon kind of uh, feel to it. Definitely lemon and grapefruit. Many of your palate's a little more advanced than mine. Oh, wow. I get okay. the, I get melon, but the others are beyond my skill set. Well, you got that melon, though, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what you want to do is next thing is when you swirl it, you want to look, and you'll see little beads dripping along here. That's what they call your legs. And the legs are basically uh, a judge of alcohol content. So the more intense or defined they are, generally the higher alcohol content of the wine. Okay, now we're gonna sip. To switch it around. And then let the flavors come out. And then on your tongue, feel where you get a little tingling sensation. Uh, on the very tip is very sweet stuff. Back and behind is, this, is your salty. And along the back and the sides is sour. 
would you get? I noticed the lemon more the, and kind of grassy. Yeah, definitely for certain, the citrus, right? No, but on the tingle on your tongue, just go like, well, I'll swish it. So we're going to swish in our mouth. You get a little funny tingle on your tongue? A little bit. Where? Right at the tip and kind of further back on yeah. the sides. I get the tip too. That, that That's a sweet. Okay, and Pinot Grigios are very sweet. Now, what Pinot Grigios is good for, like it would be stuff like your seafood, um, like tapas, like, you know, uh, it's like you get a seafood at a, a fancy restaurant. What do they put on there? They put a lime there. And that lime, well, <laughs> this is your your lime to, to, to match up with it. Um Crazy, I, I would like to really try this with a key lime pie too, as far as a wacko crazy thing. Um, always, I always enjoy the non-traditional pairings that you bring yeah. up. And, and, and that's one thing I like to do. I like to, I'm gonna tell you what the traditional pairings are, and then I'm gonna try, try and tell you, you know, something I just came across by accident or how it pairs up with weird things, right? But uh, this would also be good, like if you're going New Year's Eve or Christmas around the house, um, charcuterie board, okay? People think because you got the prosciutto and the salamis and Dijon and all those other Italian meats there and the cheeses, you think, oh, it's meat, it's got to be red wine. Wrong. They are very oily, like, you know, prosciutto, like it's just very fatty and oily. A white Pinot Grigio does very well at Sauvignon Blanc and, and, and a Riesling in addressing that and not overpowering it and, you know, they combine very, very well. So if I'm doing a charcuterie board, um, this Pinot Grigio definitely is what I would I want. And the Pinot Grigio grape, is de it's Italian. And Italy is the largest producer of wine in the world followed by France or Spain, and they flip every other year, so that close, and then you get the US. Um, Canada, they're not in the top 20, but as far as awards go, they're moving up the ladder very, very fast. And we at home, I'm a big supporter of supporting our own product, especially in times like today. You know, try and go find a, a beer uh, that's coming from England, you can't get them. Well, I spoke to somebody at the LCBO. I went to get champagne, and they said they had two choices, or you could spend three or four or five hundred dollars because the border is being closed this year, and the Port of Montreal strike. Uh, they didn't get the supply that they normally get for the Christmas rush. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, you, yeah, a nice bottle of Krug or uh, <laughs> Dom Perignon. Yeah, that'd be all right. <laughs> but uh, anyways. So this would be, you know, definitely a charcuterie board. Go for it, okay? Um, on the Waco side is like I said, it would be like a key lime pie. Uh, I would like to really try this with. And actually I have, and, and, and it does does very well. There's also another thing called Lasardo cherries. They come in a little, you gotta go to an Italian grocery store to buy them. They're in a little bottle, about that big, and they're 20 bucks for the bottle, but they are, oh, they're to die for. And when when you have like a Pinot Grigio, it just brings out so much of the cherry. And, it, and you would think like cherry and a white wine, like, yeah, but no, it's a really good pairing. That's so, interesting. Yeah. So. This is well, nice and light. Yeah. It, it's pretty it, easy drinking. This is really definitely one to, during the summertime, when you're uh, out boating or done cutting the lawn and you don't feel like drinking a beer or you're just sitting out your deck and you know just chilling watching the neighborhood or whatever this is a nice one just to sit back and relax with on a hot hot day very very friendly for that you know this is see that this will be my choice chill her up a little bit and uh it's a go mm -hmm. sounds good so let's show the bottle again uh, and we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next one so in a skill and uh, Pinot Grigio. Okay. 
The next one here we're going to do is uh, Canada's second best hockey player of all time, Wayne Gretzky from the Gretzky Estates. I don't care. I've watched Bobby Orr play hockey live at at uh, the Joe, uh, Joe Louis, and I watched him live at Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens, the old gardens. That guy was phenomenal. I'm sorry. He just had a short career. He's a defenseman, and I've seen Wayne play too. Both phenomenal hockey players, but you, like Bobby. you and Paul can have that uh, debate at our virtual Christmas party. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, this is a uh, Wayne Gretzky 2018 Chardonnay. It's unoaked. In, that, in other words, it's just been uh, put in the uh, uh, stainless steel vats, processed bottle. There's not sat in oak barrels at all. And the difference between that is you get truer the grape, tends to be more fruity. Uh, when you get uh, oak Chardonnay, you tend to get more like the butterscotches, the butters, uh, you know, little creamier stuff. Okay. And that, the, they really match up nice with like uh, lobster and butter and uh, pastas and, and stuff like that. This one here, it'll go very well with like uh, chicken. Uh, uh, a crazy, crazy fit would be uh, butter chicken. Hmm. You know, like Indian dish, butter chicken. I'm telling you, this would go cut cut it, and it would be awesome with that. Um, but there again, if we're sitting at our uh, house, um, entertaining guests, the five or six we're allowed to, family or whatever, um, during the Christmas holidays and New Year's, I would uh, probably look at uh, strip cocktail. Would be ideal with this. Uh, shrimps, uh, I mean scallops with uh, bacon, would go very, very well with it. Uh, chicken tacos, I, like I said earlier, um, this would be the thing. So here again we are, we're gonna sniff. Ooh, you get that. Eh? This one has a lot stronger smell than the oh, last one. a lot more intense, a lot yeah. more intense. It smells like like almost a, like a perfumey chemical. Yeah, I don't, I can't place it. Yeah, I'm getting pineapple. Hmm. Different, different than most of Chardonnays. Well, Wayne was definitely a different hockey player. Right near the top. Let me see here. It says creamy pasta, just like you uh, oh, yeah. alluded to. Yeah. You know, it doesn't say what it, you know what you get here? You get apple. Yeah, apple or kind of pear, like yeah, a lot of citrusy fruit. Too. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't get citrus. I get like our, definitely I get apple and, and pear. So there you go. Probably would go very well with a uh, uh, fruit salad. Hmm. That would be my crazy whack on, but definitely would be butter chicken would be my thing. Now, what part's the tingly? We'll go to the tingly part of the tongue. Oh, I get the sours. Mm -hmm. Along the sides, you'll get that with, uh, with this wing. There was a little more appley taste too. Yeah, definitely, like almost a caramel, like a caramel dipped app, apple. I get, and that and that would go in line with the Chardonnay that, that you start to get the buttery thing. I really notice the sour, the longer. Oh yeah, the longer like, it's there. Absolutely, my tongue on the sides is really, uh, really, really tingly. So, oh well, that that that's good. Uh, a crazy match. This would be uh, popcorn, peanuts. Um, that type of thing would mm. go well with that. And you know, this is a Chardonnay. If you get a white um, champagne or sparkling, the grape they use in it is a Chardonnay 90% of the time. Mm. And when you're in the uh, Chardonnay area of uh, like a real champagne, has to be made in Champagne, France. Any other place in the world, even though it'll say Champagne Method, is sparkling wine. And the whites generally are made out of uh, your um, 
Chardonnay, and rosés, which are generally made out of Pinot Noir. And uh, when you look at the Burgundy region, which Champagne, I believe, is just a little north on the map, if you look at the Burgundy region of France, if it's a red wine, it's Pinot Noir. If it's white, it's Chardonnay. Okay? So this there. one really dragged my mouth out. Yeah, it does. Definitely. And that tells you it probably could use a little bit of time to chill a little bit. But uh, I like it. And like I said, I could see this really going well. Butter chicken, popcorn, peanuts. Uh, and while you're doing your party, your uh, co uh, shrimp cocktail, your uh, scallops, bacon wrapped scallops, uh, tempura shrimp, you know, deep fried, that, mm -hmm. seafood, like that. There you go. Interesting. Lots of choices there. Yep. So I'll just show that one a little closer to Wayne Gretzky Chardonnay. Okay, our next one is going to be the heartthrob grape, the, the hardest grape to grow, and that's a Pinot Noir. And this is from Magnata Wines. Um, this is a special label. There's a donation of something that goes for the first. Uh, it's a foundation for Lyme disease. Okay. And it's something like a dollar or something like this for this bottle goes towards that foundation. And it's at the University of Guelph. I think it's probably says something on here on it, but I remember reading it and reading it when I first came upon. I was trying this. Um, I mean, doing a wine class there in a couple of weeks, and uh, out at uh, Mitchell's Bay, and I tried it just. I brought it home, and you know, you got a lot of, and I can't say because in case the winery ever from other countries, not Canada, I'm talking about, ever seen this, I don't want to get sued. Okay, but they say they're Pinot Noir. Well, if you go to Burgundy, where your Pinot you know, Noirs originate from, and you work with this and you smell it, you go, now, this is what a paint Pinot Noir is. And we're going to break it down. A uh, very unique wine. And the thing I like about Pinots is it's not a full body bread. It's, it's more the medium light, but it pairs well with everything. I find, like, it's if there's ever a wine that you have to, to pair with this is this is the one it goes with chicken it goes with salmon like i i have i'll, I'll do uh barbecued salmon and i'll make a cherry sauce like Dem chef Demetire showed me how to make a cherry sauce i'll put the accent with it um on the other hand like i said chicken it goes really well with mushroom things like uh, mushroom risotto mm -hmm. uh mushroom um uh nuki noki gnocchi whatever no you know what i mean any italians don't give me heck my time's not the best. So it goes very well with, with earthy kind of um, uh, foods. And one of the craziest, craziest things happened to me a couple of weeks ago. And you want a crazy pairing with this? <laughs> uh, my kid and I, I was trying this and we were a little bit hungry. So I barbecued a couple of shinkle hot dogs for my, my son and I. And I tried this with it because I, I google i said what can i have with my hot dogs because every now and then you just want to sit down and i like to eat i like to have wine i, I i've only grown sitting there drinking budweiser and all that all my life i give that up 30 years ago um so i like to pair wine and i'm going well what wine would go with a hot dog it's a pinot noir so i'm sitting with this pinot and that's when i opened it to try it i mean I'm it, scratching my head, but I'm scratching my I'm head. I'm telling you, it is one of the best food pairings I've ever, ever had. Hmm. With the with the mustard, it was just mustard, ketchup, and shinkles hot dog on a bun. Excellent pairing. I never would have thought. I would have thought that would have been Budweiser time. I would have thought too, too, but I'm like one of the people that just like to have a little bit of wine hmm. instead of beer. I thought you were going to say chocolate cake. That's coming up. <laughs> Because yeah. I think that's what you served to us last time with Pinot Noir. No, the last time I served it was it was the um, a Meritage, a Niagara Falls Meritage, okay. and, and a Meritage is a blend of your your Cap Sauvignon, Cap Franc, and Merlot, possibly a little Petit Verdot or Malbec, is is what a, a, a Meritage is. Some people call it Meritage, but it's it's you know uh, how do I put this? If you're in the Bordeaux region. Of France, uh, it's it's a blend red you get, and it's always made of Cab Sav, Cab Franc, Merlot, 
little bits of possibly Malbec and uh, Petit Badeau. And they don't name the grapes there. But everywhere else in the world, you have to name what grapes go in there. And when they say Meritage, they're basically saying it's a red blend of the Bordeaux grapes. Hmm. Okay, so France kind of is a little bit unique in that they have their Burgundy region, like I said earlier, Chardonnay and Pinot Noirs, and then the Bordeaux region with the reds, and on the whites, it's uh, Sommelion and uh, Sauvignon Blanc that they blend. So if you have a white Bordeaux, it's a combo. It's either one of those or a combo. So, but anyway, so we're in Ontario and we're looking at a uh, uh, Pinot Noir. So. You should know that a smell. There's lots of berries, almost jammy. A uh, little jammy. You get the cherry. Yeah. Oh, big time. That's what I got. But at the beginning, I it almost I almost got like a pepper, but then the berries came through. Yeah, the, the, I I got big cherry berry. Um, and if you really and I know if you let this one sit for about an hour to can it and let it sit, you're really going to get it. And if one of the big characteristics of Pinot Noir is its earthiness. And it's a barnyard smell. So you smell like you're in a hog barn or whatever. And I get hints of that in this. That and doesn't sound very appetizing. It isn't, but <laughs> it's one of the most popular grapes in the world. Like if you go uh, into the Burgundy region, you know, some of those top end wines are three, $400. You know, just the standard, you go to LCBO for uh, one out of there, not like the bottom line, just the medium is 75, 80. So um, this here, I know, but it, that's what it is. That's the earthiness. That's why it matches so well with mushrooms. And um, I wondered why you said mushrooms. Yeah. You see how that would fit? Right about here when I'm is where I'm getting the barnyard. So I'm gonna have a sip now. I tried some already. Oh, uh, I get huge cherry. Mm, big, big cherry. I'd like to try that someday with the black forest cake. <laughs> no? Hey, you're the boss. Like I said, uh but def definitely cherry. Uh, like immediately. My sour. I went from the tip of my tongue to the back to the yeah. sours. It's like it, it evolved a lot. And, it's fat uh, at the back. Uh, yeah. It's still there. I know. It's very long. Like for uh this is very, very nice peanut noir for I think it's fourteen dollars and ninety-five cents. Um and I mean, it's a true Pinot. It's not these other ones that they're saying they're Pinots and they smell like uh, more like Merlots and, and uh, jars of raspberry jam. So, well, these two are the, you said when we were going to shoot this video, make sure you get this one, this one, this wine, the Magnata Pinot Noir, and the next one, which we'll uh, announce soon. You said yep. I could get whatever I wanted for the other two, the other two, the whites. Eight. And I'll have the next one. I'll keep, remind me there's something I have to tell you. Okay. I got to let them know my age, my head goes, right? Old age. I like this. I really, too. really like this. It's quite nice. Yeah, it tastes so good with that shakles hot barbecue is fine, Donnie. <laughs> Who'd have thought, right? And, that, and that's part about having wine and, and, you know, being able to find little things by accident. Like, uh, I remember sitting at my house, um, well, when I did that thing, it was about three or four years ago. Yeah. About a year before that, it was, or a month, no, it was just a month or two before that, because it was a Stony Ridge. I had a, a 1997 Stony Ridge that I pulled out of my cellar. Meritage. That's they're, they're a winery from uh, along the bench region of uh, Niagara Falls. They've really changed. That was there the last time. Um, um, their wines aren't quite as intense, but they're really big cheese. Like uh, cheese has become a big uh, factor in their business. Well, there's a cheese factory yeah. in the same town. Yeah, and and you know they got some 
great cheeses if you're ever going through that area. And their wines, if they had a, a, lab, uh, a library, you can go in and buy it. A little expensive, but they were well worth it. So anyways, what was happening, I was eating this chocolate cake that uh, uh, my wife had made. It was, uh, you know, the, was it devil's food cake or whatever? Beautiful cake, eating it. And I'm sitting here with this this bottle of Meritage, and I've still got some left in my glass. And I take my cake bomb, and I just said, well, you know, what the heck, just. And it was like, wow, you know, my mouth just, what a combination. And when I brought that in here that day, everybody was laughing at me, and I was going like, hmm, not bad. Well, he came in with a whole bunch of pairings we never would have thought, and they all worked out. Pinot Noir well, with well. pumpkin pie. Yeah. <laughs> that was well, another. That was it, pumpkin pie. Yeah, pumpkin pie and Pinot Noir from uh, the Legends Estates. So, okay. So let's pass the bottle to me and I'll show it a little closer. And the Magnata Pinot Noir. Then we'll go to the, the last one. This was the make sure you get this or we're not shooting the video. Okay. Sandbanks, Baco Noir. Five years ago, when I drank a back on the wire, it tasted like I was eating logs out of a campfire. They were horrible. Um, there was Fran Francois Baco, was the originator of this grape back in the 1800s from France. And back on the wire is really starting to be widely grown in Canada because the grape likes a cooler climate. And uh, because of that, it's, it's kind of becoming Canada's grape along with the Cap Franc because they like cooler climates. And uh, not too many other places in the world you will find a, a Baco Noir. And where it's evolved, I, I was uh, about, mm, about six months ago, I tried a Peely Island one because uh, we were talking to Peely Rappin and she said, you know, let's try this. Okay, and I go, yeah, okay. So I did and I go, I was surprised. And uh, it makes a great sangria is what it comes. Hmm. So anyways, I just said, you know, I'm thinking about this wine thing I got to do, and I'm, I'm trying to really focus on things unique to, to Ontario for the, my first one. And, you know, back on the wires, definitely unique as, as is Cab Franc. So I tried this Sandbanks. It's from um, Prince Edward County, like up around Kingston, Dalvera area. And, uh, a very very nice surprise and um what you what would you drink this would, would definitely be like your steak or beef dishes or uh stuff you know and talk about beef dishes i want to back up a little bit to the pinot noir one really good beef dish that is classic which you throw a bottle of, of pinot noir in beef bourguignon so there's another dish if you want your your Pinot Noirs, beef bourguignon. Hmm. I should have remembered that. <laughs> this one poured way more purple than the last one. Oh, a lot much darker. You got your old? Yeah. Can you see the difference? You can see a big difference. But it was noticeable how when you were pouring how purple the yeah, and, and you'll notice too around the Pinot Noir, there's a little orange tinge around here, and that's quite common for Pinot Noirs too, a little ring. So, anyways, I wow. can smell this one <laughs> from here. But Jan's it's, uh, it's arm's length away, and uh, mm -hmm. oh, I get, I get, oh, I get huge chocolate. You don't get that chocolate. I think you better go have your nose checked. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get a little bit of smokiness. I get the smokiness. Absolutely a spice. Yeah. Um like almost like a, a paprika kind of spice. And a little cherry. About uh, more of the, the, the dark fruits like the plum and that type of thing. But I did I had a really nice hint of chocolate there. And it was funny. After I was working with this, and like I said, this will go with your steaks, uh, barbecue pork chops, that type of thing. Really, you know, your heavy meats. Uh, meatloaf would be perfect with it. Uh, you know, you the comfort food. Um, uh, the beef tacos, uh, beef skewers. 
you know, and during Christmas, a nice beef skewer, you know, would go well with it. And uh, how in the Waco pairing, non traditional, non traditional, <laughs> I'm telling you, Black Force cake or a German chocolate cake. And for the heck of it, I tried those Losano cherries with this. It was a bomb going off in my mouth. Okay, so not sure, you're not thinking. This was one very, very nice dessert wine. And now that's kind of what, you know, I kill a few birds with one stone where I have my, my uh, barbecued steak and I make sure I either have a uh, Black Forest, uh, a German chocolate cake or um, I tried it the other day with a uh, chocolate cheesecake. Went very well with it. Hmm. And I got to dump my Losardo cherries on it now, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, very, very unique wine to that. Uh, and then the funny part about it was just uh, two nights ago, I was looking at the LCBO website, and they had this virtual thing on it. Hmm. Guess what wine they had? Guess what the guy, they weren't sipping or anything, but guess what the guy said he would have with it? Chocolate cake or Black Forest cake. Hmm. So go check the LCBO, LCBO, and they have, I didn't know that they have uh, virtual things for Italian wines, for whiskeys, for beer tastings and that. It's pretty neat. They're adapting and not being able to do it in store too. I know. Well, did you see uh, Roundhouse tore that all on? No. Yep. So, anyways, um, Sue's got some good legs. Now, what part of your tongue goes? The sides in the front, like not uh, like the very not front, the very front, but the not salt. far from the it's front. It's the salty part that's got. It's where we are. Uh, so I, my salty is still going. Uh, and like I said, this would be this would be great one with uh, any barbecued steak or beef, uh, pork. And the crazy pairing I have for it is a chocolate dessert, whether it's a black forest cake. Chocolate Dutch cake, chocolate cheesecake, just chocolate. And, you know, I think in that video, the guy mentions, he talks about he smells a hint of chocolate in here, too. Hmm. But uh, this is uh, becoming a $15 staple at my house now, too, for those days you want them. Hmm. So, anyways, that's pretty well it. And... Uh, too bad we didn't have enough money. We could buy some ice wines. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to keep it short to about 30 minutes. Uh, this is our first attempt at some home entertainment for what's likely to be a strange winter. Uh, so I want to thank all of our clients uh, and, and wish everyone a happy holidays. Uh, if you like these videos that we're shooting, uh, let us know. Give us suggestions. Uh, and if you want to hear see Vinny again, uh, talk about some different wines, uh, um, reach out and we can set that up too. So uh, thanks everyone and have a good uh, a good night. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs>